Good morning from Yami BTV. Um, oh, it's 11 o'clock still morning. Uh, I was going to say good afternoon there, as promised. Uh, the first set of bombs being dropped off this week is with my old mucker. I haven't seen him be calculated for 37, 38 years when I was a little whippersnapper around all the big lot went in Wandsworth in them days and Paul was doing a sentence of some kind uh, at that time. So Paul's, Paul Tiernan is in the house and get ready for this one. Lovely to see you after all these years. I am. I have nice to see you, mate. mate. With my boy Paul. Been a long while, um, mate. I'm going to start off different from everybody else, how I do it, how we do it on Yami B TV. Paul Tiernan, when you was younger, right, so we're talking products of environment, where you grew up. Can you remember the first crime you committed and can you remember your early juvenile delinquent friends you had around me and how you fell into crime at that early age and leading you on, obviously, to be one of the biggest names, talked about gangland figures in true crime history? Bit extreme, that. Right? <laughs> you are. Bit, you're, in all the, you're in all the books. I don't believe in that. I don't believe <laughs> that. No, you don't believe it no. now, Paul. I don't believe I didn't believe it then. No. No. Did you know? no. Right. I ain't got an ego yet. Oh, no. <laughs> never have. I've never had an ego. All right. Sweet. <laughs> all right. How was you when you was a little boy then? <laughs> the I, was only a, I, was, I was a fucked up kid. Go on, Paul. <laughs> most of my, most of my um, friends was all just normal come from straight families. Yeah. But my dad was a hater of the police. That right. was his... So in our house, yeah. the police were the enemy. And right. from a small kid, they was the enemy. Did he go to prison himself? Yeah, he'd been to prison about three times. For? Theft, violence, and then when he got nicked for them two fucking silly books in his shop. Um, good relationship with mum? My mum, I love my mum, I love my mum. Him, him, him and my mum, well? Plenty of rares, just rare after rare. It was, it, it was that era where the man was the man, the woman. Remember Paul, it, different. He never laid hand on my mum, to my knowledge. Yeah. Smashed the ass up on a regular occurrence. Yeah. It was normal behaviour in our house, right? But he was, he drummed things into us, which, all right, I've heard you. You haven't got to keep. It was like he had to make sure. Yeah. You know the enemy are traffic wardens, the police. Yeah. Screws. Yeah. Anything from authority. Yeah. They was the enemy. Right. So I grew up. Yeah. With that exact same attitude. Right. So you never, never had no. He, he wasn't hands on you or nothing. Never. Never. Loved you. How many brothers and sisters you had, Paul? Two sisters. Like me. Yeah, two sisters. I yeah. got two sisters. Yeah, isn't that strange? And I was the middle. I was the first born. He was the first born. I've always said the same thing about my mum. Yeah. I was the one they made the mistakes with. My second sister, they got my first sister, they got it right. And the third one, Son, you won't have the hump about this, but she didn't matter. That's how she felt, right? Because she was the third one. Yeah. The yeah. first two would get their prioritised. Yeah. The third one is just the third kid. Yeah. And she, she suffered the same as me with her own issues. Eating yeah. disorders, drugs. It's, she's had a rough life, my sister. Still around? Yeah, she's still around. Winning? Yeah, winning now. Yeah, been clean for four, like 15, 15 years. But like me being a brother, you like you've got two sisters, protective. You've been, been, it's always been a boy. We didn't like them. Didn't like them, Paul. They ruined my life. They ruined my little world. Wow. And that's how it felt. That's how it felt. Yeah. So, so then I felt like I was... The odd one out, black sheep. I, I was pushed out. It, that's natural. But that's how I feel. It's strange. It's fucking strange. And then... I can jump through the two major events in my life as a kid. I've explained this before. The incident with the hammer. Kid nicked me ball. Didn't nick me ball. Wouldn't give me the ball back. I went upstairs for Sunday dinner, crying. They've nicked me ball, at me Sunday dinner. He put an hammer on the table. This is this is in front of me mum. My sister's weren't there then. Yeah. Puts a big hammer on and he went, finished? I went, yeah. He went, come and get your ball. So I just want to go and play football again, don't I? Bring the hammer. Pick the hammer up. I ain't got a fucking clue where I'm going with this hammer. How old are you? Seven. 
That's a rough guess because my childhood is very. Where's this? Patchy. North, North London. Paul. In the flats right next to Pentonville Prison. The, I told you, what, what I didn't, I told Jane Dingus, that looked straight into the prison. Wow. So I'd spend my days looking out the window, watching the prisoners walk around in stripes, and it was a fascinating place to be, to watch. Yeah. And of a night, all the screaming, and because the lights went out, didn't it? Nine o'clock, bang, bang, bang. Did your father end up in Pentonville? Yeah. Golden mm. it, it was mad. Yeah, so I'd go down with his hammer. He went and took the ball, points at him. He went, right, go up and hit him straight over the head with the hammer. My days. And I just felt instant fear. I didn't want to do it. And I didn't do it. I walked towards him and one of the other kids shouted out, Tony's got an hammer. And this Tony ran. Right. And my dad said, why didn't you hit him with a fucking hammer? And he made me feel like a fucking, a weak. He put me down. One of them days you were going to do it properly. I knew that's what he wanted from me, but it weren't really, it weren't yeah. me. I weren't like that. And then I had the first incidents, which was the abuse, the first time with a bit of abuse, right? Oh yeah, we, I, I, we got that in common. Yeah, we, we both what been through. What age Seven, about seven to eight I was. Mm. No relative family? No, no it, was a, it was a geezer in the flats, and he was known well, my mum and in our house, she was referred to as Charlie the Puff, right? And he had an ass a flat on the second floor. And it was, in them days, you, you went in, knocked on someone's door and said, can I have some, got any biscuits? Yeah. You could do that, yeah. right? But I was told, you never go in that man's ass. And me being wanting more fucking food, I went there on my own. And I knocked on the door and I went in I can still see the room. I can see the table. Smell it. Yeah, I can smell it. I can feel it. The table had newspaper over it instead of a tablecloth. And it looked like one of them a typical dingy paedophiles flat. Now. Fucking hell. And I went in there and the rest of it is quite easy. But all I knew was I was wrong for going in there. That's how I felt. I'm wrong. I can't tell me, mum. She's warned me. You couldn't say no at the time to it when it was taken place. Well, was, I was a little kid. So I felt. I couldn't. I, I, I just didn't know what was the fuck was going on. And it was. It was. Did you go and tell anyone? Never until I was. I think I was 40, 46, 40, Might have been younger than that. In a real now. Never told no one. I think I may have mentioned it to one of my aunts. No one would have believed you. It was shame. Shame yeah. you felt. But I didn't actually feel the shame. Uh, was it prolonged, Paul? Sorry, viewers, but I've got a lot of uh, people that are abused that follow Uncle Yami because I, I both mean full stories. I get a lot of one off, say, A one off occasion. One off occasion. Mm. A one off occasion. But that's, that's pre puberty. That's damage. That's child children. So, school time at that time, before that happened, your school time, how was that going, Paul? I was, I was, I was got quite normally, right? I didn't seem to ever fit in. Like, I, I, I believe whatever school I went to, if you'd have said, do you remember Paul, Paul Tiernan? Mm. People would go, no. Mm. Because one, I wasn't there, I'd yeah. fuck off every day. Yeah. I'd go to one of my aunts yeah. and sit up her ass. She came around my ass a couple of weeks ago and she's sitting there and she was quite emotional. She went, you know what hurts me? The fact that you used to bunk off school and come to my house, and that had happened, and I didn't know, and you couldn't tell me. Unbelievable, I used to do the same thing. I used to cry, I didn't want to go to school. Yeah. Everyone knew as well, because I reported mine and no one listened. I ended up in institutions all my life, but it's about you, Paul. Paul, so, that's the first real trauma. The hammer. The hammer? That, that, that well that's the biggest thing, because I found Paul, Throughout my life, right, because I was like you, I was a mummy's boy, right, we're brought up that way, don't hit women, respectful. That's how you got to be, you can't lay hands on women. We was, always, we was always like that, me and you, and many of us on it, you know, no, but I used to feel totally lost about my mum, and when that abuse happened, Paul, it's only now in later life, I realised that I was probably numb to what it had really done to me. Mine was more, mine was more, more prolonged over a period of time. 
um, in, a, in the surroundings of a children's zone. But I used to dismiss it like it was nothing. I used to read psychological books. I broke it down myself, uh, made sense of it in some ways because there's nothing. I feel like I developed people pleasing. Um, then I found it hard, became passive when people asked me to do things and I don't say no. Yes, 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 yes. yes to Whatever it is. And Paul, do you know what? Funny you say this. In recent times, I identified, and I've been around, I'm going to name them now. Um, it is a known fact that a lot of children, people's children, love me and want to be close to me quickly. And, and if they're parents, and I know them, and children, and I give them a hug and I love them, you know what I mean? But when it's strangers, with the kids, I get all funny if I don't know them. And on yeah. the train the other day, there's a prime example where a little girl was screaming because she wanted to leave her mum to come over to me because she must have heard me talking on the phone mm. and me pulling faces and yeah. all that. And she's screaming, Mama, I want to. And her mum was saying, She's never been like that with anyone else. But when she came over to me to hold on to, I was all tense and everything. I realised that I never based it on trauma before, but I struggled. I didn't want to do change nappies and things. I didn't want to go anywhere. I'm wondering if this was all related. Do I get, what is it that it does to the mind that makes you feel? And at first, I don't know, I'm going to ask you, do you feel any guilt on your part like it was your fault because you knocked on the door and went in there, but it ain't. Not the, the guilt, it ain't. It's not guilt from that side it's of things. Gone. It's the fact that I couldn't tell my mum because I was wrong. Your dad would have killed him. Yeah, and she warned me. You never go in the house on your own. And I went in the house on my own. So, as a kid, it's your own fucking fault. You shouldn't have gone in there. It's like climbing on, it's, it's not, but it's like, don't get on that shed in case you fall off. That's what you're thinking. That's what I'm thinking. She ain't gonna do no, of course not. Would have killed him, but I'm, I'm, I'm that young, I'm, I'm, st I'm still. Because you're gonna get told off for being for some. It's like, it's that, like, yeah, what do I do? I, and I just buried it, it just went, crash. That didn't happen, let's move on. And that's, that's really how, how my life sort of just, it, it, that affected me really, really emotionally. And that's why I, I would always, I've said this before, I'd wanna, my ass wasn't an happy ass. There's no, we had all the nice things, but a lovely home. Yeah. But it was just, cold and there was no love there, right? I think that's just how they was brought up. My mum and dad, my mum loved me, my dad loved me, never ever told me that, but it weren't a word you used. I can't even say that to my own kids today. I can't say it, Yan. It's like, it's like you're embarrassed to say it, because, oh, it's so fucking deep, because you don't feel Look, I've, I'm a very honest person, right? And I have to be, abs I can't tell lies, and I have to be honest with myself, right? The three regrets I've got in my life, and now the worst, really, was my mum, the way I was with my mum, making her bring up here to prison. Yeah. Not making her, but my mum being my mum, she would have done anything for me. Putting my mum through, queuing up, getting searched, putting her under that sort of fucking... I wish I was a better son, right? A better husband and a better father. They're the three things, if I could change in my life, them three things. But you've got a chance with the other two. I've got a chance with my grandkids, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I am a better... I think I'm a better father. As an husband, I'm hard work, mate. Because oh, I'm still an addict. I've been clean for 14 years in October, but I'm still, I've still got a lot of addict traits. But I'm also carrying around this troubled little kid inside me that people don't understand. I do. Because I can't, yeah, you understand it because you, you probably know what I'm saying. The little boy's Paul. It's that little boy, that little boy's always questioning That's everything. Sweet. Yeah, he talks to you, goes, Sammy, it's been such a strange thing, Paul. It's fucking scary. Because he knows who we really are. It's the early bits, Paul. It is. It's fucking horrendous. You give us a chance. I'm so pleased doing this, Paul. You're a proper real man, you know, Paul. Paul, so that with mum, it's good that you explain because I've been out long now and I was institutionalised. 
I love my mum, I always stuck up for her, I never blamed her for the care thing, she didn't have the skills. But I'm, as a mature man now, with the way that I conduct, I would have dealt with her different too, so I totally get you on that. Because as the man you are now, you see that, it, all right, at the time, you want stuff and all that, and she's, your mum's going to do it, and she's proper and she loves you. But in reality, it, we, you know, it wouldn't have been the man thing to do, because we know we didn't let women do crime for us. We never put them up front. We always used to be the proper man and do it. Yeah. But little things that you could change, like, I'm doing now, of being the man that, those little, small, they are smaller and bigger things, Paul, but the kids and the things and that, the first thing is knowing but you're saying about the love word to say because it wasn't said much to you. You see what I mean? But you could still, when you say, you do, for that kind of, you can make do it different in the way you're doing it now because you know that you want to do it. You want to be able to say, I love you. And I love, I know I, never, I couldn't say it before because it wasn't, you didn't receive it that well in the household. And I didn't either. The only person I received off was my mum. My kids know. My kids, under, my kids fully understand me. They know I'm fucking troubled. And they know... What I'm, what I'm, what I'm still going through. I'm working through it. I'm fucking sixty-one, and I'm still trying to, to to get the grips of who I am. It's only now that I understand that this young kid who's inside me is is it runs my emotions. If someone rejects me, yeah, he's the first person that feels it, but then it comes over into me. So I question everything. I never want to get anything wrong. I want to be correct all the time. I have to be right. Um, I don't want to be criticised. All them mad things, I'm fighting all the time to, to still prove myself worthy for him. Because he's, he's the wounded soul. I'm not. Yeah. He is. Yeah. But it's so hard to explain. And then, I, I was, my childhood was... It, it was all right. We had a laugh. We'd done what we was doing until the second incident happened. Right, this this was... I've never spoke about this in depth, but today, because I've had a few little comments come through saying, why didn't you grasp the paedophile that nonched you and things like that, which I find you need to walk in my fucking shoes before you've got anything to say, right? So I would just say this. Now we're aware that we got groomed, right? We used to go to this geezer's house and listen to music. This man was about 40, he was a hippie. And I'm gonna say his name. I've never named anyone for anything in my life, but today, maybe this is something I need to say. His name is Dennis Croucher, right? And he lived in the flats. And we'd all go up there and listen to music, and it, it was somewhere to go. Right? And he got one of our other friends, who was a little bit effeminate, to get us up there. We're oblivious. We are absolutely fucking oblivious to any of this, right? So we go to have a cup of tea, biscuits, I love biscuit, obviously, right? It's been my damn full of biscuits, right? Go up there, anyway, we start there one night. This is, I've found a lot of this out since, because I've approached two of the, I thought there was three people in the, that night, there was five people stayed there. And one of my mates, Steve, has got such a memory, he remembers it. And he said, Paul, there weren't three of us, there was five of us. So now, in my head, all I hear is five of you. Fuck me, there was four of them. One of them must have seen and heard this. One of them must have. And they ain't said nothing to me. So I've carried that all them years thinking that they knew. So there's the shame, there's the, this, this embarrassment, there's a lot goes round. And he, he, listen, I said to this counsellor, I said, listen, my problem is, why didn't I fucking stop him? She went, because you went back to that seven-year-old kid. You froze in fear. And I did. I froze, just couldn't even fight him off. She said, but he didn't get what he wanted. So you did do whatever you had in you to do to stop him. To an extent. To an extent, right? But what the issue was, it was, you all knew. Yeah. I believed. You all knew. They did. But they didn't. They didn't. But none of them knew. Yeah, but you're So they're saying. telling me, right? I believe Steve. Nah, you believe him. <coughs> he went, Paul, we've all discussed it now. And they went, 
did you know when you went on them 10 years ago? Why didn't you say nothing? He went, because it ain't my secret to tell. And he wouldn't lie to me and neither would the others, right? <coughs> but after that, things unraveled for me. That's when I had to sort of, now I've got to prove that I'm not a, oh, it's a fucking hard word to use. It's like, say it, Paul. He made me feel like a puff, this cunt. Yeah. And you're going to prove that you ain't. And I'm going to prove I ain't. He made me feel like a fucking queer. It makes you feel vulnerable. You're going to react and develop into another way, the way that I did. To fight off the feeling of being the lost, insecure, vulnerable little boy. So uh, this so went back. So it's like a, a it's just a, a, a ball. And your growl becomes. Yeah. Yeah. Later. yeah. But yeah. I could never tell no one. And I never did. Everyone knew about me. That killed me as well. Yeah, that must be terrible. They all did. But do you know that or do you think that? No, I know because I, I reported mine and then I've done the stabbing. So it was news I got taken out of school because of that. And they said, yeah, it's because he stabbed the manager of the children's home who was abusing him. So. But you've done what is the right thing to yeah. have done. But no one believed me, Paul. The coupons, um, Westminster Social Services turned their back. But That's what they do. Anyway, like, anyway they? Paul. Cover their own backs. Anyway, Paul. Um, so, you lived in those flats, right, from how long? This is a separate flats. The first flats was there, the next flat was Bemerton Estate. Right. Which is just down the Caledonian Road. So you lived in them, them flats up until what age? That made it till I was 19 when I got nicked. So weren't that Dennis Crouch are still living around? Yep. And you never killed him? Not then, I wanted to kill him. When I went to prison, my first, don't forget, I just, I, this is what I found out since. One of us had one of his albums. And my mate Stephen went, I can remember, he said, what you've done. He said, you got his album and you scratched with a, with a stone, poof, right into the album. He said, I thought, there's not poof, he's a paedophile. But, but it, it, yeah, it, it's, it's puff. Pedophile, what? That didn't exist. No. That word? No. Right? No. You're a puff, right? Because we knew that he'd made a move on one of the others, right? After the event, right? Mm -hmm. And I scratched that into his album. He said, and I thought, why has he done that? He said, I could never understand why you've done it, right? I knew why I was doing it, but it was my way of. Oh, it's fucking hard. It was my way of letting him fucking know. Listen, I, he obviously knew that I knew, but it was, it was a childish thing to do. It's the only thing you could think of. But I was, still young he was a, I was 14, but I was seven. Do you know, you say this, right? He Arch said to me the other day, recent times, Arch told me a story, Tony Arjun. He said, Yanni, listen to me, boy. He said, when somebody else, right, was younger, got molested by a lady, Right, and I never I knew lady molesters existed until I came out in a sense because I always hated men in a certain way. Tony Argent turned around and said to me that when the lady molested um, his, his mate or whatever, right, years later, he saw her again and this geezer's a proper killer, bad man and everything. As soon as he saw the lady, he was weak like he was when he was a little boy. How's, how's that? Takes what did he mean, Tony Argent, when he said that? Because it takes you, you're powerless. You're just, you feel like you, you know what you want to do and what you should do. But oh, it's so hard to explain. Oh, he's dropped some, he's got so, he's too intelligent for you. Tony, Tony, Tony yes. Yeah, Tony's a very, very deep man. He's deep, deep. He's, he's a bit like, he's, you're, you're in a kite singer, but he's, I think he's too brainy for his own good. I do, do but yeah, but that's what he said. And he says he hits some big notes sometimes. I have to get out of the room and leave him, you know. He touches on my stuff without saying it. Saying it. Mm -hmm. he, go, he throws things in like he knew what I was feeling when I was there. He's a fucking, I don't know whether Grendon fucking turns him into a fucking thing, <laughs> but he seems to know what everyone... That's what, the no, thing he's anyway, um, Yeah, go So on. going into that bit, Big Paul, now, yeah. that estate, right, you let it go. It's the record scratching. When, so what age are we talking can you remember your first Six ever crime? Oh, the first, I'll tell you, the first ever crime I ever committed was I nicked a pair of trainers. With both left feet. Where from? 
from the shop in Holloway Road. Yeah. And I remembered, I put them on. Is that white? Just that way, yeah. I put them on. Size, Paul. And my mum went, where'd you get them? My boy. And when I nicked them. Yeah. And she went, they've both left fucking feet. Madness. I didn't care. Where'd you think about that shop? Yeah. Because they have to put one on the you other. Had thing. Got a bit yeah, you had to Yeah, because they, they do it that way so they can't get it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And it was like, yeah. that was it. And then from, from most of my nickings after that, yeah, yeah. was predominantly being drunk, salt on the police. I think I've had three salts on the police. No robberies or burglaries or nothing like that. Not at that point, no. no. What age was this the track? So moving into 14, 15, about 16. God, I bet you were a late starter, Paul. Mm. Yeah. He's like, well, what's I, what, when did you leave school? I left school when I was 14, 13, 14. I used to work on a fruit store. Didn't excel there, but you learned. School? No, I didn't fit in in school. No. I'd sit at the back of the class mm. and just sit there looking, and I'd think, as, you did, as I did all through my childhood, I, didn't, I don't fit in here. I'm different, all you can't. So here's a chair, yeah. and I'd throw the chair over the top of the classroom, yeah. just see, I'm here. You fight a lot in school, Paul? Not really. No, yeah. I didn't. I didn't yeah. fight. Any childhood sweethearts? <laughs> Paid kiss chase? I see, mate. I see, love that. I pulled something after that, like, um, so you get to 16. Right. Who, before you set out and you became who you was, unfortunately, um, do you remember who your young, early friends were from around that estate? All from school. All from school? All from <coughs> school. <coughs> All brought up in them same estates. I always knew I was different. I always knew that I was going to be the one that was going to get yeah. nicked. But there was also the, the thing going on in the background. I was different because of what, of what happened. And you all know, but none of you are saying anything. It's oh, like the elephant in the room. Fucking hell, Paul. So I, I just... I know what that feeling feels like. Oh, listen. Even I could walk into a fucking packed restaurant and I can feel that everyone is going, that's how it, and he, that went on in my twenties and thirties. Oh, what do you mean, but you fought back and this, this, this is not, it's been the downfall, it was a down, down. So Paul, so the, the early delinquency, so then you moved into heavy crime, when then? I suppose the first time really was the robbery. Which was? Which was, the geezer coming out, walking into the bank with a bag. I went with a fella. I said, I'll take the bag. You wait on the corner of an hammer, right? It was outside the Barbican station. Yeah. So I'm waiting. The geezer gets out of the bag. I run at him, snatch the bag, and hit the floor within seconds. Got rugby tackled, right? Yeah. It was like, yeah. It's over when you can't get away. Oh, anymore. mate, he's got me around the legs in a proper tight grip. Yeah. And I just splattered on the floor. The geezer on the fruit store, who happened to come from a well-known crime family, yeah. right, out of Oxton, right? Yeah, really well-known family. He dived on me, he held me down. Yeah. We didn't get no help from him when it come to making statements and all that. He just scored a bed it. And there's me screaming from the rooftops. Yeah. And no one, people didn't care, right? <laughs> and the geezer who was with me, I remember getting the floor, yeah. I looked up at him and he's got an hammer. And he's looking at me and I went to him, no. Because I know we're all both going to get nicked. Yeah, 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 right. And I just went, go. Yeah, because if he comes, he's going to get nicked. And he fucks off. What'd you get for that, Paul? I got two years for that. Where did you go? I went to, Lu I went to Lewis, Lewis, Ashford, Wandsworth. Describe um, Ashford. Like kids' home, innit? It's like, it's like a children's. He's like the, all the children, he gives us the children's over in, in yeah, the younger environment. That's what it's like. It was an um, oh, it was a dungeon, wasn't it, Paul? Horrible place, really. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It had a very grim atmosphere about yeah. it. Lewis was better. Lewis was like the real ones, it was like all them, like that. Like, yeah. I had some fucking, I mean, do you remember any names from in the early bits, Paul, from around about that time? Uh, there's one name I always remember, and I've, I've always wanted to see him, because me and him used to stand up and have some good fights in the cell. Yeah. Emmanuel Angle, big black geezer. Hold on. Didn't I do I was with him? Big, oh, muscly. Big. Had his hair sticking up. Had, had a, a tash. Big, a big sort of... Was he from East London? Hold on. 
Like and Gore Wimps and Hellsbury are ones for me. Like really big for his age. It might be him. Big lump. Yeah, don't get we're all sort of 18, 19. 19, yeah. Yeah. And he was he was like, um Yeah, he, he was a good man. We used to have some good fights, me and him. Yeah. And then I say Lewis. Lewis was a funny place. I had a row with a geezer in Enfield Town one day. Not I'm lying, it weren't a row. I'm walking up one side of the road, he's walking down the other side, and we're looking at each other. And we're giving each other the growl. Right. Mm. Now by this time. I'm on bow and I've got to move to Enfield with my mum and dad. Yeah. Because I, I didn't want to be, well, that was part of my conditions. I didn't want to be anywhere. But anyway, yeah. I'd still live down in Cali. But I'd still go up with my mum and dad. So I'm walking, I'm looking at this geezer. Anyway, it, we go to the distance and he's gone. I come out the recess in Lewis and I bump into this geezer. I thought, fucking no, you. And he went, you're the geezer on the other side of the road. Effing hell. Isn't it mad? It goes like that now. And and that was about 1982, I'd say. His name was Johnny Woods. And me and him become really fucking good friends. See. Right the way through till the man, he, he ended up dying of cancer, the poor fucker. But he was, um, he was, he was, most people you meet in prison, yeah, they're just shipped in the night. You just pass, you'd never see each other again. But some. Yeah, stick with you. Stick with you. happened to me all my life, Paul. Yeah. I pull so all right after that you do your first stretch. Who would you say? Because I'm going to ask you because it seems to be common knowledge. Uh, he mentioned you to me. Uh, rest in peace. Now he is your closest round at North London bit at that time. I know for definite that you and Wayne Wayne Uren, rest in peace. For those that ain't not many know about Wayne Uren, they said he committed suicide in scrubs recent times. Um, but I put it to you that you and him were best friends from childhood. Near enough. From from 16. Right. What gives a bit about, about Wayne? Because people don't know that. We haven't had anyone tell us because he was Britain's most wanted man. I, I, I sat with him and I heard that he was nicked for four murders and I heard everyone was it, terrified of him on the out. And when I saw him in jail, I saw things from him. I felt quite sad sometimes, but he's a very serious man. He goes down really good soul man. But very on edge, Paul. He was a different kettle of fish. I believe that most were quite frightened of him. Can you bring he, give us a because you're a man who knows him really well and your opinion on that so called suicide? Well, with Wayne, he was um, he was a game man. He loved Wayne. Loved having a strainer. Yeah, he would love having. Yeah, they ate the biggest. No. no. But he was, but he was, and he was fast and he had a heart. He was fast, because he, he, he reminded me of some other gear. That's what I said. I'd go on, go on, Paul. He was fast and he yeah. had art and he was, if he was your mate, he was your mate. Definitely. He's one of them people who die with you. 100%. And if I had to have someone to go to war with me today, yeah. he'd be one. He'd be the first one I'd go, Wayne, first. 100%. And then Arch, second. Because I've seen Arge and I know what Arge is. Oh, Arge is like me. Oh, Arge right. would rather die. Yeah, hundred percent. Than not not be there. I love. I always love him, man. Yeah, love him. the fucking but it's dangerous, dangerous. But with that, with Wayne Owen, we'll stick with that before we get round. Wayne was, yeah. Wayne Wayne was a good fucking friend. Yeah. But then when I got nicked for the robbery, yeah, we sort of obviously I'm in prison. Wayne's moved on to. Other things. Yep. Now I'm in I'm in prison, which we still get letters, comes up and visits, but he's now on his toes. Yep. So I come out of prison, Wayne's doing whatever he's, he's staying out of the way. But he was he was a good man, Wayne. He was a fucking good man. And what they done to him in that in that scrubs, I've said it enough times, but it was fucking wrong. They knew. They knew he was relapsed from his mental health, yeah. right? And that all started in Brixton. Was he on a recall or something? No, no, he was. He, he started in Brixton in 1987 when he was nicked. Yeah, I saw that. I saw, I saw him then. For yeah. shooting, yeah, for shooting the three cousins. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. Or two cousins. Allegedly. Allegedly. Right. Well, plead guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's been other occasions where we get to where people admit things that they didn't, but go on. Yeah, we know that. People we, do do yeah, that. Go on, wait. Go on. And they. Wayne could have a fight, and I think once he was in there, and they, he, he covered himself in baby oil, yeah. 
And he had the chair up with him, with, yep. a, with a lump of wood. That's when he done when he done the five screws, when he came out of the... They just, in the end, they him. Mark Sade went up to visit him with um, Wayne's wife. Oh, And wow. he had two black eyes. And you could see that they'd, they'd changed him. Whether they'd done him with the gear or the light gap tool just to subdue him. Because in them days, you know, that's what they used. Like that tool was a normal fight. You could go and get that at the edge. They force it. They, 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 they seem to reject people. I know that like that tool was around a lot. That was banned in Germany, like I think. That. You don't, you can't see. You're properly mourned out. That's all you are. You're just suppressed. So whether that done him and that changed him, he never, ever came back from that. So the poor man lived with that mental health for so many years. Is that years. where you reckon it developed from? Yeah, without a doubt. He so before, before that, that, there was no paranoia, no edginess. He was just... Nah, he was just... Look, some people... Listen, mental health. Yeah. You don't catch it. It just appears. And you, you don't even... You, you can ignore it and go, yeah, he's, he's acting fucking... Yeah, he might be this, might be that. Mental health, people don't... People don't really acknowledge it. And people are scared to acknowledge it and actually say the word. I know, I used to be. Because it's not, it's a thing where in, now everybody agrees that they got it. But in the old days, to be laboured with it meant that you was a raving nut, stay away from her. Exactly. And it was a weakness. Oh, yeah. Really? Now, look at what everyone's saying now. Yeah, but a lot of people now jump on the fucking, on the bandwagon for the welfare and the social. And they're, they're grafting it, some people, right? So, Paul, so, as well as that with Wayne, because he was on the island with me in the early days, right? But... He was got put in the unit, and there was also the talk of four murders, and that he was a hitman for big families and things and all that. Yeah, absolute bollocks. They went and interviewed him while he was very ill, in psychosis. Right. That's what they've done. This robbery squad went up there and basically just worked on him, worked on him, until they told him what he told them. But once he got to court, and he had, I think it was Michael Mansfield he had. Yeah. And he went to the court, and the judge just went, this was obtained wrong. So that's how he got the four tariff on the two strike, because he couldn't get life. He got off them and got the rest of the shooting of the police. So he finished off the 20. Finished off the 20 at first, and then he got the four. Then he got four, and then he went after with that. A, yeah. Yeah. He got the 20 for the Cossers. Yeah. Double AK all that time. Mm. Okay. And he'd done, he done about 15. 40. Yeah, I think he'd done his full whack. Well, you'd done 12 then, wouldn't you? Because him and Nicky Dunford were close. Yeah, he loved Nicky. Did you know Nicky? Yeah, I knew Nicky, yeah. Johnny Dunford? Yeah, yeah. John, good man, John. I like John as well. I forgot about that, that you knew that. So, Nicky Dunford was a handful, Paul. Yeah, he, he, he loved Wayne. Wayne loved him. He loved Wayne. Like... Yeah, he did. It was them two that done Bronson and I, with Desi Cunningham. Is that part of us? It was. No one brings it all. They come up with all these different stories, but it was the three of them that day. Yeah, it was, Paul. Yeah, that, yeah, Wayne, yeah, 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 it was with a pitchfork. It was. I, I, it was no, it, was, it could happen to anyone. Bronson never ever came up on the location after that. But so that's another story. We're not ruining Charlie's legacy, but Uncle Yummy always likes to, you know, throw in um, the facts. Would you, so, with Wayne, did you see him after the 20? Yeah, when he come out. When he come out. I'll oh, visit him throughout his sentence. sentence. Oh, yeah, yeah throughout his sentence. Good man, Paul. Right. Paul, so when he came out, how was he, family, sister, mum, with him, you, change? Yeah, he wasn't the same man. He was not the same man. And when he got the, what I saw him with, a four tariff or something, as fixed up. Yeah, he got a four him. for a bit of sniff, I think. And was he? And he got off the murders? And that, Yeah, that was all just flung out of cold. They were just say, but they were calling his name in all, a lot of big ones. They, listen, we've seen through history, in, in, that, in that life, yeah. how many people can we name who's had their life put on the fucking papers and bollocks been said? Yeah. Don't have a Terry and the long Listen, that's a rude Terry's had it for fucking years. Yeah, they ain't even fucking that. Everything. And look at, and, and David, look what they try to do with him. That's mad, isn't it? That's why I call him the greatest of all time. But anyway, I Paul D that. What a sad end for Wayne. I yes. also believe, I believed, Paul, in my heart, but so that, you know, rest in peace. But I saw a lot, some even some of the big names feared him, you know, Paul. They did. 
But anyway, we leave that. But yeah. why? Because wine was a listen. Wine was born in the wrong century. Yeah, wine should have been born Jesse James days. That's where he should have been. That's where he the fucking that was. That was him. That, I went out with him one day shopping. I never even told no one this. He went to me one day, come let's go to Hampstead. They're coming in. So you take that. So I've got one, right? He's got one. Because he's 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 on his tub still, yeah. right? So we go to Hampstead, we're looking in his shop, he goes, right, I'll have this, I'll have this. Try that on. I went, no, I don't want I'm alright. No, try it on. I'm going, no, I'm all right. I can't take the coat off because the thing's there. And he just took the coat off of me. And the geezer went, he went, you're all right, ain't you, mate? Yeah. And the geezer looked at him and went, mm -hmm. and That's he just, what it's like. Yeah. It's like, you say like that, Paul. Yeah, but blatant things. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a bit, he's big, but he had that presence. And yeah. I don't know, mate. I never met. I proper loved him like you, Paul. Oh, I, I yeah, never do like you. I didn't have but a brother. But he shouted, they just shout me up in, on the eye and say, Yanni, can you talk to, he didn't talk to many, he just was away with me. And Paul, so, all right, the suicide, we'll, we'll, the family have messaged me over periods of time, so, so I don't know whether that had come to the table. You know. um, but there was a story, Paul, from the, in your A-day, that you was pretty close to Gilbert Winter. I mean, they said he was murdered and put under the dome and that kind of stuff. What did you, how was you with Gilbert Winter? Because he was meant to have been around your circle at certain times. Listen, time. all I can say about Gilbert Winter, he was a fucking law man. Was he? Yeah, he was a good man. Law man. Right. Gotcha. Um, the other question that I was asked to ask you, because I didn't know, I knew that you knew him and I met him in prison. Stephen Marshall, your cousin? Yeah, my first cousin, yeah. True? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a bit strange. Listen, me, me, and, we, me Stephen and his brother was very close. I used to go to his house. His house. The jigsaw, so-called jigsaw. So -called moment, jigsaw. Yeah, yeah. His family was the normalist family you could ever meet. The most happiest household. Mother and father never had a bad word to say to each other. He was he was loved by his he had he was he was a nice fucking he was a nice kid growing up. And he was. I think I might have been a bit of a problem because I was always there. I was the third kid. So Aries his nose probably got put out joint by mine, like yeah. I did with my sisters. In his own way. Yeah. But that weren't what they done to him, what they said. Give him fucking 38 years or something. But, because I, I, he, he said he worked in... Stop that. Yeah, because you can, Paul. Sure. Paul, but he, he worked in a... He had a gym, didn't he, or something? He had a gym in... So when I saw him, then, he was juiced up then. He went out... They, they, he was smoothie. He doesn't look like what they say, but at the same time, I used to see certain things in his eyes. But I knew that they put him on medication. This is what I was going to say to you. They did put him on medication. They did? Yeah. That started so, in Woodhill. That was in Woodhill. Yeah. Now, what was that then? In the trial, Pate saying that he, they believed that he was disposing of bodies for the, for the ATVs. Mate, I'm not lying. Absolute life. bollocks. No, then. How did it come about? Absolute bollocks. They, he's ex- way I went to that, go and visit him while he's poorly. He's ex- more or less. I He's ex-girlfriend, come yeah. out of a statement he called. It was complete bollocks. The police knew it was bollocks. Yeah. The judge yeah. knew it was bollocks. Yeah. But they laid it in as evidence. Oh, God. So, it was yet again. So, we serve in time, more time than really what he should be. Well, really? Listen, what did he do? He's... No, it's a nasty thing, though, Paul. I can chop up a body even in my bad days. You know, there was a rumour that you was, you hanged on, had, had hold of the legs and arms. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> if you believe all the rumours you hear. <laughs> Do you want to hear some of the other rumours? <laughs> I worked for fucking MI5. <laughs> I worked for Mossad. I was an undercover agent well, for 20 well, years for Mossad. I had to say it. I had to say it, Paul. Oi, Paul. A leg and a wing. So, really, he's... Because the way he did it, me, because it turns out I don't like all that gory stuff, but, you know what I mean, to do it that way and do it... So, basically, it was just a fallout with a landlord and he tried it on with his girlfriend. He tried it on with his girlfriend. Gordon Bennett, man. The stab wound... 
from our already in the paperwork and with the slizzards, the stab wound come from someone smaller because yeah. it's a big man, Steve. Same, so the knife would nice come thing, down, man. it would show the angle. The angle, they said, it looks like it's come from the girl. Yeah. He pleaded not guilty originally. And then he done what, I suppose, you, how can you word it? He done the honourable thing and took the nicking for a girl. It's, 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 it's a strange thing to do. He didn't have much, didn't serve much prison time during his life before. I think he'd done a five. Five. I think he'd done a five for a yeah. gun. Okay. But Stephen weren't, he weren't like that. That weren't, that weren't. Well. I know it, listen, we know what the evidence says. Yeah, but he, was he on roids and them kind of things, Steve? Probably, in his day. Oh, yeah. It affects people, you know. Listen, we've all fucked. I've fucked about with the HCH. It would be I am. I, I couldn't help it. It's just, yeah. I'm a fucking addict, yeah. yeah. So whatever I touch, yeah. he's going to fucking ruin me. Mm. But I didn't have the brains not to take them chances. And he, he, yeah, he fucked around with the roids. All right, then. I, Paul, during your so-called enforcer days, you were allowed to pay people for visits, debt collecting and, you know, throwing it around here and there. Give us a couple of bits and bobs. Um, there was a guy, you now give us a couple, any stories of people demanding or you coming? Because I had a story and someone asked me, Paul, and I got asked you, and I, I, I don't know, I, I doubt if it happened. Go on, because you but don't know should, back, do you? No, I don't know Go back, on. No, but they said that you had a thing with Billy Isaac. Yeah. True or false? Fact or fiction? Yeah, it's true. Yeah? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Bill, Bill. Bill could be a bit of a fucker. Well, I didn't know Bill. I've never met Bill, but I only knew the stories about it. Long story short, he went into an, um, he went into a place, a premises, and demanded 70 grand at the place. For, for an, um, as Bill said, it was showing him disrespect. So he thinks he's entitled to 70 grand as a um, demander. As a demander. Yeah. And the geezer who he demanded it off of was, he was harmless. He, he could never have dealt with that situation. And I know what he'd have done. Well, he told me, I'm going to pay him, which would have left him in a big situation, the geezer. So I went, all right. No one else was going to deal with this situation. Someone had to step up. So did he have that, what they say, Billy Isaac, he had that big reputation, fear factor. Yeah, he, he was a big, big man. Who did you put him on, he put him on par with a bomb? Build a bomb? Yeah, it was a box on me. So yeah, like very that. fucking, I'll tell you a story about the bomb in a minute. Right, go on, go very, on. very, um, mm. a very intimidating man. Wow. Okay, I got it. So I spoke, someone come to me and told me the story what's been going on. Yeah. It was a geezer you mentioned earlier to me, Louis. Uncle Louis? Yeah, Louis, right? Oh, he told me, Louis, mm. you know, be, they used to run the nightclubs for them lot, right. and everybody. He sent a message to me to send his love to her. He's all right, Louis. He's a good man. He's a good man. He only ever had good intentions. I like him, I do. He only ever had good intentions. And I, I listen, Louis, I love you. He loves you too, as well. Mm. We had little words, me and Louis. <laughs> Not words in that way. I disagreed with something, but I know the man only had good intentions. He's got, yeah, because he's got good thing. He's realistic, isn't he? He's not. I like, when he talks, I like it. I like you listening to him, I do. Yeah, because he speaks a lot of sense. He speaks a lot of sense. And he's, he's, a, he's a good I man. Go, I go, I go. Anyway, stay with um, um, so, Billy Isaac. I'll, cool. get, I'll get Louis to make a phone call. I said, listen, someone's going to have to go and see this guy, right? Is it? So I said, make a meet with him. I said, what's the strength of him, Lou? How will he be? He went, hey, he's all right, he's a bit thing and blah, blah, blah. But I've heard the stories, right? So he makes a meet with him over in West London. So I'll go to West London. Was it West London or Twickenham? Somewhere like that. Same thing. Same difference. I'll, I'll pull up, there's a Merc in front of me. Geezer gets out. His mate's name was Chris, who was with He went, do you want to follow me, mate? I went, yeah, all right. I've got nothing on me. Yeah. But I'm there because I'm here. Yeah. I'm not going to not turn up and confront this cunt, right? Yeah. And I don't mean that disrespectfully cool, but that was the attitude, right? Yeah. And then we're walking in. 
he went in beer in a minute, phone rings. Yeah, he's here, on his own, yeah, what do you want? Right, vodka and Red Bull, this is 11 o'clock in the morning, I thought, yeah, what is this starting off like, vodka and Red Bull? Bill walks in the door, fucking hell, size of this cunt. Yeah. He comes in, hello mate, all right? I said, you right, Bill? I said, should we sit down and get this sorted out? It really ain't a lot to sort out. He said, I want 70 grand and that's that. So I said, Bill, you honestly don't think you're gonna get 70 grand of us, do you? He went, well, that's what I want for the insult. So now we're sitting here across the table. I can see Bill's holding by his clothing, his baggy jumper and all that. And he's, he's, he's put his thing in and said, I want 70 grand. So I just said, I said, Bill, you're not getting 70 grand. And this went on for about two hours. And that ain't exaggerating. If anyone needs to ask Chris what happened, go and ask him, because this is exactly what happened. And we sat there for two hours arguing. He started throwing a few insults about people. And I, and I, as I did, I weren't talking to certain people, right? Or a certain person, but I weren't going to allow him to run this person down. And I said to him, I said, Bill, with all due respects, mate, I'm not talking to that person. But I'm not going to sit here and let you run him back. And I think that put him on the back foot a little bit. And we had a, we had a, it was, it got eaten. Even his mate tried to sort of go, Bill, you can't expect him to fucking do that. And he went, you fucking siding against, and he switched on his mate. And his mate just, his mate just don't want to be in the middle of this situation. But he is, because his mate could feel that you weren't having it. it and he, he weren't getting it. off, yeah. And this 70 grand bill went down to 50 grand. And then it was 30 grand. He said, I am not taking anything less than 25. So I said, you're not getting 25 bill. Fuck it if you think we're going to stand and see you stand over us, you're wrong, mate. It ain't going to happen. I said, wait here, let me make a phone call. I'll go out and ring this geezer up, who is demanding the money up. I said, listen, I'm going to go back into this meeting. I'm going to offer him five grand for the insult. I said, it's your call, because it's you he's got the ump with, right? I said, I'll offer him five grand for the insult. What do you want me to do? He went, just offer him, give him five grand. I said, or oh, if you don't do that, I'll come with you every day. And when he turns up, what happens, happens. We win, we win, we lose, we lose. I said, but I won't leave you for dead. So I walked back in the room, I said, right, Bill, I said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. You ain't getting a pony. It's never gonna happen, Bill. You know it and I know it. And he went, and I've got to say this, this is when I see the, the um, I see that he'd sort of surrendered to it. He went, I fucking got a lot of respect for you. You've turned up here on your own. You don't even know what you're walking into but you're here on your own. So I now know that there's, he's gonna- Did be... he know of you before? Oh, you know what I was, yeah. Had you met before? Never met him in my life. Heard nothing but stories, and he said to me, I've heard loads of stories about you. Whether they're true or not, they just- he a bit older than you as well? Oh, I Same think age. he was, I think he was. I he was a bit older. Five, six years or something. Yeah, okay. was a bit. Anyway, I walked in, I said, listen, Bill, let's stop this now. Yeah. There's five grand for the insult. That's all it warrants. That's all it warrants is fact, five grand. Fact. I said, so. Seventy, you know. Here's the five grand. No, I didn't. I mm -hmm. said, I'll have the five grand dropped off to you later. Yeah. Shook his hand. He went, right. And, and problem solved. But if Bill would have gone, pulled the thing out and gone wallop, or it, listen, even it turned into a fight, Bill was a fucking, he was a professional boxer. Yeah. And I don't give a fuck who you are. If you're a boxer, you're standing the ground, Paul. I'm standing the ground, but I'm, like that. I'm still going to get bashed. But I'm still standing the ground. Wow. And that's that's how it ended. He got his five grand, and I ended up really good friends with Bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was sad. Harry. That was a strange way he died as well. I know. Got through a window. I'm going to do something on him soon. So I'm glad you've told me this. And he's he's, he's I spoke to his girlfriend. She said he got through the window, and his head got stuck. It's a cute one. Oi, Paul. Um, yeah, quick before we forget, what's that Builder Bond one? Right, when I get to Wandsworth, uh, don't forget I've come from Ashford. Right. Wandsworth, you, listen, 
You know what it was like back in that day. Yeah. That was a fucking dungeon. It Couldn't even a, talk on the landings. Shout up and all that. Shirt done up. Hats down like that, the screws. You give someone a newspaper, there's seven days remission. <laughs> for having an item that ain't yours. And wrapped up. It's Violated, like, stripped naked. Slung in, body belt, slung down the stairs, right? It's that was... Long walk to, long wrap up to that block. He went down the bottom. Well, yeah, but then I was on GH&K. Oh, yeah. And the block oh, yeah, the UC, was in the yeah. one, it was in, was the twos. Was H-Wing was the twos. That's where the block was. Wow, because that was all nonsense when I first was. That was the year after. That I was the year you. after. Yeah, when I got there two years later, that's when I saw you. Yeah, yeah. So you I'm on there. Been there. Yeah. I'm, I've got there. I've been there a couple of, I don't know, a week or two. Fight the filmy feet. Yeah, yeah. A little bit cocky. Yeah. Training in the cell. Right by the recess on the twos. Yeah. And um, I've made a bit of noise with a chair. Yeah. My geezer comes up to the cell, looks through the window. Oi, keep your noise down. Go, go on, fuck off. Yeah. Well, fuck this geezer off. Yeah. He goes. Root comes to slot, um, what do you call it? When you get your slop out. Slop out, not slop out. Night time changing over your, empty your, fill your bow up and all that. Oh, yeah, slop like, out, slop out. Slop out, yeah, yeah. One trip, two trips. That's it, two yeah, trips. trips bowl, like, water, got me a fucking... That plastic jug, the piss bottle in the fucking... You know, didn't you? Know. Yeah, yeah, go on. So I'll go in the recess. Yeah. Come out of the recess. There's this thing, right, looking through the spile. And all I can hear is, where's your fucking mate? That's the voice. It's like a punchy sort of... Yeah. Where's your mate? Yeah. I thought, oh, no. Easy it for me, this cunt, right? So I hear. Didn't you know him at that time? No, nah, I didn't know he was. I knew the name because of family. His, oh, yeah. his uncle lived next door to. His name was called the most net. out of everyone. Williams, yeah. get down here to the ones. Williams. Oh, no. Can't be him. <laughs> I just don't want it to be Bill the Bomb, do I, right? heard all the things. I've heard it all. This is what I was talking about the other day. Go on. Yeah, he's a fucking. It's one of them ones. He's like the. It's like a myth. But 99% of it's true. And I remember going, mate, you're looking at me. He went, turn round. He went, you in here? I went, yeah. I said, you ain't Billy Williams, are you? He went, yeah. I said, are you Patsy Leamy's nephew? He went, I <laughs> slung that one right in. He went, yeah, where do you know Pat? I said, he lives next door to my nan. I said, we're quite friends of the family. My uncle was so and so. When you're young, it, and he went to me, we're like family. Oh, yeah. That dope. And what's the next bit after that? Go on, wouldn't I? Let me see. But Bill, yeah. I just loved his company. I know. It felt safe, dear. He, he, you knew them I, screws. He could knock on the... Oh, don't screw. Come out. Let him out. Told you. Let him out. He had the front door keys, Paul. He, listen, he was a fucking... I used to love going after the prison. It was the easy bits for me. I used to love it when he was on the stuff. Because I know that he ain't going to go without. But everyone used to start putting everything away when he's, they don't know the half of it about him, do they? When the boxing was on, yeah. he'd come to someone's cell, yeah. right, with his little radio, yeah. and go, are oh, we lending this tonight? <laughs> You'd say the big, big radio, what it Paul, was. Hold on, Paul, I try to tell people, and I'll keep it polite, because that's the way I am, Paul, but I try to tell them that some of the, these figures out here that say stuff and blah, 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 that I know already, that Bill used to just walk up to him and go through their pockets, Paul. Bill was a bully. He was, he was, but he, but when he needed his gear, he was a bully. He was a bully. But when he, when it was time to make amends, he would turn up for you. Yeah. Depending, but some people... He they had a lot of love to give, he Bill. He didn't like certain people, but yet they're saying that they love him. But Bill used to make them cry, go through their pockets. <laughs> uh, if someone made me cry and robbed me, I wouldn't say that I loved him. I wouldn't. No. I wouldn't go up there and just because he's dead and go, yeah, I loved him, you know, and all that. That's what I was trying to say to you, like, not no. saying anybody in particular. Funny, but you go, man. you never loved him because he pulled down his pants and he thing. And he's violated you. I'd never, anyone had done that to me, I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, he was proper and yeah. I loved him. It was good stuff and that. Good stuff. Don't be scared. Speak your mind. Speak your mind. Or don't say anything at all. Simple as that. Isn't it, Paul? Simple as that. Hey, Paul, in your, in your book, dude. Yeah. Give us the artist. In I my mean, what? My book? No, not in your book. Right, sorry. thank you. In your book. You know there's never going to be a book for me. No, there won't be a book for me. But in your book or in your mind, right, Paul, five, your five artists, man, who would you want with you and who would be last man standing 
out of these five, who do you classify as the hardest, truest? Hardest or hardest, gamest? Hardest, hardest physically to win the round, but with the other elements to go with it as well, um, with the loyalty and probably even weapons as well, I suppose. But in a row, physically, who would you say your top five was? Who, who, who you put complete? Who you say would have been too much for everyone? Well, who I wouldn't be... Oh, listen, obviously, there's certain people I'm not going to... I'm not going to say because they're not... They wasn't in my little... So, yeah. 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 But if I had to pick... Yeah, because you know you want, that's what we yeah. want. We only want what we saw. What I know is yeah. what I see. Yeah. yeah. And I will, I'll be really honest with this. Go on, then. Wayne? Yeah. I'm Number honest. one on the list would be Wayne. 100%. Tony Argent. Argent, Argent. In his day... Before he'd gone through all these fucking work, what he's done in prison. Yeah. And this is going to be a surprise. Martin Valentine. Martin Valentine. Someone mentioned he's on the live last. Oh, I loved him. I right? spoke to him. I spoke to him when? on the phone Paul. yesterday. He rang up. He said to me, say oh, hello to you. Did he? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Paul, I loved Martin Valentine. He's one of the nicest people. And I've just said that. But what I say about Martin. Go on. He was a... Well, we've seen what gentle giant. He's a gentle giant. He was massive, Paul. Yeah, he he won the strongest man in prison. But I think he was with Del Crocs in the early days. I mean, obviously, yeah. I saw him in the cat. I didn't like what happened that end there. He's ended up, Martin. He don't oh, deserve Martin. that. He's the last one you would have thought would have finished off his life in there. He got a fucking listen. He's our I, you put him up there. You put him up there. It's so funny, Tony Argent likes to put Martin up. Man. Everyone that we like seems to like each other. Isn't that funny, Paul? Because Martin's yeah. fucking loyal. And it's true, Slaney loved Martin. Yeah, he did. That's his best friend. Yeah, Lydia, Martin Lydia always Valentine. talks about him. Lydia, Stevie Lydia and Martin Valentine, they were Warren Slaney's best mates. Martin was He a fun loved man. Martin Valentine, Warren Slaney. He's, he's just a nice, he's a nice oh, person. But you man. know, if he's with you, he's fucking with you to the death. In On a like, one-on-one -on -one fighting thing, Paul, would you say the greatest of all time, like, build a bomber side? Who would you say, like, in a straight and a, you reckon, match up against everyone from North, East, South, all over North? Who would you put in the pole position? For the heart, soul, everything, and you have to kill him and whatnot and everything. Is there anyone that stands out for you that you think, uh, you struggle in your mind to believe that he could have got, he could have been beaten? That's an hard call. It's hard call, isn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, because there's so, I say there's so many, it's probably an handful of people that I rate as stand-up men who will ever stand up. Because there ain't really many people out there. Yeah. Most people will pick and choose. Yeah. They'll pick their targets. Yeah. But some people will go, okay, let's go. Yeah. And they, they, they won't be wounded if no. they lost. No, because... They, it's hard because they don't like, they won't get, it looks like certain people can't be defeated because their souls are deep. Yeah, some people find it as a fucking, you can't lose a fight. Who was the evilest man you ever saw, Paul? The evilest man who I ever come across was a geezer named Phil Geddy. Phil Geddy. And I'm talking funny. about when I was in Grendon in about 80, 83, I was only there three months. You done Grendon? Mm. Go on. And he it was, was meant to be a nut house, eh? oh, no, it, it was Burnham, a nut house then. <laughs> it was a fucking nut house, mate. Good. And I remember knocking on someone's door and I went in, listen, they'd send him to Grendon and he just burst out laughing. He went, you're being nutted off. Good, man. And, they, and Grendon then, you turned up in Grendon, they videoed you yeah. coming on the wing to see your attitude and how you was. And it was screw straight away. Hello, my name's, what was his name? Alan Hartley, I think his name was, the um, PO on the wing. Yeah. He went, hello, my name's Alan. He went, what's your name? I said, Tiernan. He went, you got a first name? I said, yeah, but it's Tiernan. Because mm. I've got, I've just come from the fucking hate factory. Wandsworth, you didn't get a worse prison than Wandsworth. No way. Could you imagine some of these people in there? No, no. I, I, my first ever day in there, <laughs> you had Mr. Aswell, Mr. Douglas, Mr. Turner, when I turned up, I tell you what, I was sitting. Culture shock, innit? It's never a prison like that. 
Go on, you're better. But I like to. Because that's where we get the discipline from. It's what I lacked in my life, discipline. What do you think of Freddie Foreman? Oh, it, was, it was the real thing, wasn't it? Out of... It was the original. Out of that era. Yeah, it was the original, real fucking... The real thing. People still respect him now. And you've got to respect them sort of people. They've been around forever. You've got to respect them. He talks truth, did he? Oh, I listen to him. For some reason, he's... Out of everyone from that era, I'm talking. There's something different about Fred. Yeah, he fucking listen. He carried them, didn't he? And they need, they get all the headlines, but really they needed him. Of course they did. Mad, isn't it? They needed people around them to do their fucking bidding. That's the truth. And they did. Yeah. What about if we... Right, from that life, because you met some of the supposed major bosses of families and, you know... They could have a row, they had the charisma, they had the mindset, the loyalty, the love, the honesty, the sympathy, um, help, great power, didn't do a lot of time, you know what I mean? And what who would you say the greatest of all time was for all things? Not the hardest, but could have a row and loved, respected. And name calls like we know and everything, and other people, that few people out there, and they didn't do these things. And presence, aura, um, the love that they hold for you. Um, I'm picturing certain conversations I had with certain of these subjects over the years, and certain times it's the brainwave of who knows when they say little things here and there, and I hang on to it. I think he's fucking smart, he is. Who would you have said, Paul? Stood out for you throughout all of it. I've got a feeling that I, I, I'm not going to say, all right? I, I was going to say, because it's North London. No. I'm not going to say, but for me, there was, there's probably been two people that I've met over the years that had this way of carrying yourself. Listen, I always think um, a man, that you can walk into a room and a man can make you feel special. Right, make you feel they're not looking down at you, they're not trying to intimidate you, not trying to bully you. They can make you feel at ease for no other reason other than they're good people, right? At heart. Whatever people may portray people as, I'll go by my own feelings. Yeah, me too. I don't go by what other people have an opinion about no, us or that. No, no. I'll go by what and there's a couple of people, yeah. Won't show they are. I don't want to pump their ego up. Give us what, what, North London, Essex, where? Manchester? One from North and one from East. We know who they are. Well, there's probably two from North, but it's what I'm saying. All right, cool. They had this, they had a... Oh yeah, Paul, Paul is, um, um, I never knew that. I heard you done a bit of work with one of my besties of all time when you was in, when you was both living that life, George Constantino. Yeah, I didn't have a, I didn't um, come into a lot of contact with George. No, I was away with his brother. Yeah, but George come into um, he yeah, probably won't mind me saying, but I don't really give a fuck. No, he don't, don't, he don't, right? yeah, yeah, he's straight now. It's all past. I'm not naming you anything. But he, 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 he done lying, couldn't we? Yeah, exactly. Mm. He, He'd done something years ago, which I thought was a bit, uh, he taped someone up. Yeah, this is a false thought. He's also a false thought. Have you heard that? No, I haven't heard He taped someone up. No. Um, that was his job. That's, that's what he'd done. Yeah, because I'm, I'm going to get him, he might, I might see him soon. Mm. He's, he's, he lives in, in Greece now. I found his brother a funny fucker. Yeah, he's fine. He's a lunatic as well, Andy. I think Lewis would be man. He could have a right go, really, couldn't he, Paul? Mm. As well, Andy. Anyway, we were, I'm just, I heard that through the grapevine, but I didn't know. But I knew that um, George was on the fringes of roundabout everything during that time. While I was in jail, I used to hear little things. But Paul, to transitioning outside, finding peace at last kind of thing. I mean, um, from... How you used to be, you talked about a few things where it's still difficulty trying to change all the 
imperfections you're still hard on yourself with a couple of few of those things that you know like at home family life and you know that expressing yourself in in certain ways but you've got better and better as the years go by um you regret that life obviously now um here today are you happy happier than i was here today Glad to be here, yep. right? And in the end, the only things that matter in later life are the things that you spoke about earlier. Blah, blah, blah. And paying more attention and wishing that you had, but doing it in a different way to how you did it because you did it a certain way for so long, Paul. And for a man that lived that life for so long, you didn't do much porridge prison. No, I don't. It's Six. weird, strange, didn't do that much. Really. Six years beyond so the door. So that means you saw loads out here. Yeah. Paul. Well, I've been, I've so been. it's hard to like walk away you know, for, without money and you had your hands in this pie and the, you had all these links to people. I know it's these days not a lot of people that started off close together, close anymore. Everyone, some people don't, they talk on the phone every six months or something and they don't really speak at all and go and see each other no more. And it, it hasn't worked out the way that I had it in my head of being a criminal to reach it, even though I'm absolutely delighted. Um, but spiritually, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing things that mm. give me pleasure. Yeah. Without harming anyone. Yeah. That's what I like. I like to just. Yeah, I, just, I like doing these panels. I love doing them. Yeah, we're gonna come up with the kids. I love doing it. It's just uh yeah. and it's every time is a different it's a different issue. Did you know Terry Ellis? Terry Ellis. No, I've I've spoken a couple of times on the oh, thing. Oh, yeah, I forgot to ask. He's, him. An, he's, an, he's a nice oh, man. What about Johnny Lawson before I got we go? John, I was in listen. He was alright, wasn't he? I always liked John. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I always liked John. I was in um Johnny Lawson got one from them robberies, I think them jewelry shop way back in the day. He's a big lump, wasn't he, John? Yeah, he's kind of cool as well. Yeah, but the school things, the panels, sorry, they Yeah, they 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 the, the, as I said to you, they're, they're to do with the courts, isn't they? Yeah. And if the kids, whatever the charge may be, mm. they plead guilty, they go on this panel, we sit down with them, Is we it? work out a, an um contract for them. They gotta do this contract. Yeah. If they fuck up three times, they go back to court. We have that decision, which wow. I've already said. I didn't know you did all this. Yeah, I've only yeah. done it 18 months. So I had to take a course and all that. And they listen to you. You got to, if the face fits, kids listen. You know what it is? I won't listen to anyone. Yeah, yeah really. I'll tell you what I do, right? Yeah. To get these kids to sort of take notes of you, yeah. they're going to have to trust you. Exactly. So I. I can usually identify, I'm, I'm tuned into like these teenagery sort of things and yeah. I can usually sense, yeah, that's about that. So yeah. I usually yeah. throw it on the table. I don't yeah. know back, I tell them what I've been through, the abuse. Well, I've only just started talking about that. I know, I know. Deep but I throw it on the table. Yeah. Well, yeah, I trust you. Yeah. Now you need to trust me. Yeah. And I had one the other day, this, this black kid, he was a fucker. Just sat there looking at me like that. Yeah. Proper attitude. No, that's how they are. And it not was, all of them. Right, not all of them, but no. it was. It, at the start, they'll be like that. It was. And I said, listen, mate, so I understand. So you break them down. You hate the police. I said, trust me, I hate the police. Yeah. And the woman went, well, not so much now, Paul, because you've, you've now really. I said, no, I still hate the police. Yeah. I always will. Yeah. But I'm just telling him, I know how he feels. Mm. And he looks at me, and I can see him softening to me. And it, it was quite funny because at the end of the battle, I just said, listen, what I would love to see, mate, is in a year's time, you're walking down the streets with your mates. Yeah. And he goes, looks at you, look at me and go, you all right, Paul? And I'm going to go, sweet, bruv. And I went, did I just call you bruv? <laughs> I couldn't believe I said, oh, bruv. <laughs> our, our web programmed as well. I do it with the kids. I go, yo, nephew. I said, so what are you saying? I'm just sweet. I, get, I hate myself. Sometimes I think I'm their age. I, yeah, but we are. Oh, emotionally we are and that's the fuck up about it so we've grown ups emotionally I fucked. said to the, the girls is, yeah, I, mean, I keep forgetting my I've, I know exactly what you mean Paul yeah we're emotionally messed up 
but I do it in a loving way. Mine's more dig, uh, like it was in prison. Yeah, it's all so. I've just in a time. I, I did, I, yeah, I, but your life's been about prison. Oh, God. Your life's. And that's when I sit here and I think, you've done the amount of birds you've done. Yeah. I've only done six and a half years. Yeah. And I fucking hated every minute of it. Yeah, I'm sure you've done well. I don't do my bird easy. Yeah. I do it how I want to do it. Yeah. Listen, in Belmarsh, I get in Belmarsh. There's your uh, menu there, fill out your numbers. If you don't fill it out, you end up with a shit, don't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, the freeze. Oh, that's a murder, that veggie stew. Oh, they're living. I had that every it. day. Oh, and I used to forget to put mine in. Oh, I wouldn't put it in. I used to say, I'm not in a restaurant. Yeah. I ain't filling out. If I want to fill out a menu, yeah. I want a bit of steak. I know. I'm going to tell you, this is a funny story. Go on, go on. So, anyway, this Ian, he went one day, I went down to get me up plate. And they went, here, fish and chips. I went, how the fuck have I got fish and chips? Because I want to be a martyr, don't I? I want stew every day. I want yeah. shit. And he went, I couldn't watch it no more, eat that shit. He said, Ian, he went, I couldn't do it, Paul. He said, so I've had to fill your forms in. I'm taking over your fucking ordering. And he ordered my food every day because I wouldn't do it. Anyway, me and, me and Stevie B, we get to um, Belmarsh. I have a row in, with a screw in Pentonville. First, we get to Pentonville from Chelmsford. Walk in Pentonville, upstairs, on the freeze, about half eight, door opens. There's a geezer, Black Lloyd, right? He's really well known, right, Black Lloyd. He's standing there with a tray with a whole cooked chicken, right? And the screw's standing there with him, and he went, Yeah, I'll pull, Steve. And he's given us this cooked chicken, and the screw went, What the fucking hell is going on here? Yeah. I went, Cheers, mate. Nah, he doesn't even get that at home. <laughs> but it just shows you where we was thought of. Me yeah. and Steve, instantly, right? I'm thinking, hey, do they know we're even there? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I have a row with a screw there. If you've been in the Ville, you know what I'm talking about. Fellows. Yep. Big, muscly, horrible yep. bully cunt. Yeah, I think he got sexy. Go, go, go. I know Mr. Fellows. He man. put it on me at the visits. So I come out into the thing. He's standing. He's got his trunch and stick. I went... Come up to my cell and I'll have a fight with you. Mm. Not here, where all these are, man. Come up to my cell. He went, yeah, I've heard it all before. We come up. I said, mm. come to my cell. Mm. I said, you understand one thing. Yeah. You're in charge in here. I'm in charge out there. Yeah. You don't know I'm from the Cali, right? Silly bastard. Door opens up. Stand in there. Come on, you two. Cut age, you're going to Belmarsh. <laughs> you shouldn't even be in this prison. Shit it. So me and Steve, we get sent to Belmarsh, on the book, as block four, all good people, all proper people, stand-up men, yeah. people you like to be around. Because that's all about prison, who you got to do the bird with. Because the long fellow told you were it at that time. No, this is 94. Oh, 94 when it first opened. Yeah, I passed through Brown about that time. Yeah, yeah. So no, I remember, yeah. I've come back from court one day, and I, always, and I spoke to him about this the other day. Come back from court, went to the hot plate, I'm expecting stew, chicken stew, I think it was, chicken curry. So yeah. Get the hot plate. Jason Vella is yeah. behind the hot plate. Do you know him? Yeah. What do you think of him, Paul? I can't say he's always trying to prove himself because yeah. he was, because that's what I've always done. Yeah, but he was younger than us a little bit, wasn't he? A little bit younger, bit of a bully. Yeah, I didn't know much about it. He wasn't bit a of a bully, torturing people, fucking. Taking people's clothes off, fucking fish hooks through their heads yeah. and all that. Madness. But he ended up getting a 20, didn't he? He ended up, he's, he might be, in, he's not, um, he's a bit unwell now. I've heard that. I think school. he got into the other shit. And anyway. I didn't think his name rang that much before. No, he didn't. And he was from Basildon. He was from Basildon. He weren't really. In his little gang, he was. Well, he was, oh, right. Yeah, because I had a little thing, but not much. He was the only one who was on the, on the book. Out of them all. Out of all that crop, I think that was about 12, 15 handed. I think Jay Draper might have been involved in it, I can't remember. Yeah, he put this funny thing said about him now. Listen, well. there's people, listen. Uh, but anyway, people say a lot of things about people. Mm. And I'm one of these people, you've got something to say to someone. Something. Go and ask them. Go and ask them. Yeah. Don't fucking spread rumours. Go and ask the man the question. I saw right for it. When I looked at him, I didn't. I, but mind you, I was up prison. I was in my dorm in it. I knew he had gear, so I was just looking at him. 
kind of thing saw through him what he was trying to. Well, act he like. weren't dabbling then. No, he weren't dabbling. He did eventually, and he yeah. was he was on the he was he used to sell a little bit. He you? weren't on the op plate. I come back, yeah. gone over to the tray. Yeah, the screws used to have a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Thing yeah. Him, and yeah. I went. You just missed me then, Paul. When I was on the lie down there, so I remember. But that, this, yeah. I bet you, this has never happened to anyone in Belmarsh. Cool. Right? So I walked into the op plate. Steve's gone with his grub. I've got the thing. He went. Still, I went. Nah, I don't want that. I've been a call all day. I want. I want. No, well, you didn't. And anyway, I went. You know when you've had enough. Yeah. So I cleared the whole op plate. Right, cleared the op plate. Everything, bread, the stew, everything. I ain't fucking having this bollocks because you go into cut a mode, don't you? Right. Yeah. They all come down, they all march me back to the cell. He's come running up, Steve, what's fucking going on here? They want to give me, he's <laughs> looking at me like, you cunt, just clip the fucking up, I want plate, because I ain't giving no chicken stew. Right. So I'm, I'm, my mouth is dry as a fucking thing. So he's giving me a bottle of Luke, say. so I'm drinking the Luke, say. so they've gone right, bang up, everyone's banged up. He went to me, screw went right. You ain't had no dinner. What could make you Settle down. Cool. So I went, what do you mean? They said, what can we give you that make you happy? I said, sausage in batter and chips from the fish shop. They went, slam the door. And three quarters of an hour later, door opens. Where was the sound spot for? Yep. Gordon Benny. Two sausage in batter and chips from the fish shop. All right? And I looked and I thought, old screw. It was just, one of them has gone, see, give him what he wants. Yeah. And that's unusual there, you know, Paul. Listen, I've seen it happen. And I'll tell you why. There's a selected few that will get that treatment as well. Do you remember Gary Staggs? <sighs> no, I knew his, oh, his right, cousin, right. Lee Mitty, who just oh, died. Right, well, I knew him. Lee Mitty. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Gary, yeah. He's, he's got a good name. Gary's probably Game right. man. He was game. Oh, so what happened with that dinner? They come and brought it in. They brought it in to me. Yeah. As they opened my door, my mate's next door. What's fucking going on? What's going Because he's thinking they're coming to take me away or something. What's going on? I said, listen, don't worry. I said, I'd just give me sausage and batter and chips and a fish. He thought he was rising him up. What do you mean? I said, yes. And all of a sudden, his door clicked. He went, hold up, hold up. They're coming into me. And as his door shut, he went, oh, I've got it and all. It was, it was a classic. Serious? Yeah. What was that, Stevie B? Yeah. We Go both on. ended up with sausage and batter and chips from the fish shop. I defy any man that's had that privilege. Mm. Fucking hell. But in in the K in the Asbot 4 in them days, there was a lot of it was calm. Yeah. It was like a unit. I remember being on there, Paul. It was fucking great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone on there was nice, there was all nice people. Yeah. I was on there, I was on there with Perry Jeroni, Pat Smith. Um, all of us was there were Gary Staggs. Um, but the long fella passed through once. No, that was that another time. That's got to be 98. That was 98. No, I'm talking 2000. Everyone was, everyone was on the wing at the same Mark Noons. Um, yeah, Paul, proper, proper. You got lucky there, mate. They wrapped me up three times at Belmarsh and Bastards. They, I, my worst hidings came there. Yeah. And everybody joined in for me. So they never done it again on the last go. See, and in Whitemore, they did the same. In, in the end, I was a no touch guy. Well, that's when, See, when I got like there in back the end, though, innit? When I got there in the visits, before, Louis Shepard and all that lot. I was on um, crutches because I've done my leg yeah. in the veil, right? So I'm on, I was in a wheelchair, flat tires, yeah. took the air out tires. So I'm in a wheelchair, he's pushing me to yeah. the visit. So. Yeah. Anyway, Vella's on the way to the visit. So he went, after this visit, I'm going to knock that screw out. Who's so, saying that? Him? Jason. Right. So we're on the visit, sitting out. I'm yeah. talking to my wife. Yeah. He goes, Right, I'm finished visit. He gets up, so I went to her. I looked at him, he went, come on. So I went, go and go, we're gonna go back. Cause I know he's gonna kick off in there. So I follow him in, I'm on my crutches. I walk into the, um, where they get searched. Yeah. Vela's, <laughs> he done it so blatantly. He went, oh, stretched, and then swung round and knocked this screw spark out. Did he? Left him completely flat. Didn't warrant it, right? But to Jason, it did. And I think that was for me and Stan's so benefit, I was right? just going to say that. It man. was, it was. And he's hit the floor, and then the bell's gone, and that big, remember the big PO, the big giant one in there? There used to be a really big PO. He was there, the security yeah, or something. Yeah. They've all come running in, and I, just on instinct, he went, what the fuck? I went, gov, accident. 
What do you mean? What do you? I said, no, I've gone off balance and they're hitting with me, with me crutch. Close my favours here. Right? So I've, I've took the blank for it, right? Didn't have to, but it would give someone an out, right? Come back and beat me on the arse. So I'll go back to Belmarsh in 98. Oh no, Paul, you ruined it for yourself. Yeah, you know, didn't you? Go back to Belmarsh. Yeah, no, nah, you had it sweet. Nah. So they went to me, right, you're going to. Um, Turn around this way, Paul. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to Ash Block. You're going back into the old, the old Paul Titter. Is it Ash Block 3? The other one? You had Beirut. Yeah, Ash Block 1. Three, that's, Beirut is Ash Block 3. Ash Block 1, it was. I was I've been in there as well. So yeah. I don't want to go over there. I'll make up some story. There's, there's a war going on. And I'm going to be targeted and right. I can't go there. Just made up story. So anyway, long story short, down the block. So I'm sitting down the block, down there for a couple of days. Take me to the governor. So he went, right, what's your problem? I said, I'm not going on that fucking wing. I don't want you put me on there, there's going to be murders. He went, oh, well, I must have been so fucking thick. He went, what prison is best for you for visits? I mean, with a said, the veal, <laughs> scrubs, <laughs> and I've eaten him. I went, I don't care, the veal, the scrubs, they're shit ups, but it suits my family. He went, right, he went, didn't you eat Mr. Santo with a crutch? Uh, I went, no, no, I went, it was an accident. I said, and I was explained it was an accident. I said, so, he owes you for life, Vella. Vella, it, listen, he'd have to say, he, and he would, he'd say, yeah, he did. So I think he ended up with something stupid yeah. down the block. Nothing. Didn't, what, that, because that's when the thing happened with Paul Ferris and them, I think, in Belmoss. It's got this fella. Yeah, I think it was up the road, wasn't it, I think? It was up the road, wasn't it? Yeah, it was up the road. Yeah, yeah, go on, Paul. Yeah, so... Oh, well, he done a, yeah, he did do his, he done his thing a little bit. He done the right favour there, mate. Yeah, it did. And it's well, just, it's yeah, just... Yeah, he was definitely throwing off in front of him. Yeah, he was. And that was it. They went me OK, went back to the wing. Next morning, camp ill. Can't, Can't be, be a bigger shit hole, can it? I'll be there for you, sit up with it, going across there. When was that? So when was that, 90? 98, end of 98. Fucking hell, you big miss me by minutes sometimes, mm. Paul. Paul, part one, hour and a half, absolute min. You lot got lucky. God, I didn't even know about these other bits for the last half hour, because that was going to be a part two as well, and probably a part three coming. And with Paul, we'll have him sitting on panels as well, he does a lot of youth stuff these days. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure, Paul. You were dialing like the realest man. I am. Yeah. I love Cheers, you, mate. Right, all you, Paul. Gordon you. Bennett, mate. Um, well, no arguments there, people. Uh, once again, the great Jammy Yammy produces the goods. See you soon.